I came out to UCLA in 1996. I had just finished my master's in science and biology at Texas State University in San Marcos, Texas, and came out to actually geography. But that short stint in geography was important because I shared an office with Travis Longcore and Catherine Rich, and they ended up getting married and starting a nonprofit organization, <laughs> the Urban Wildlands Group. And that is the nonprofit that I uh, work with for the butterflies. And that is through my affiliation with them, which started in a grad lab in the bottom of Bunch Hall at UCLA. <laughs> I uh, was called by Travis uh, and Rudy, Rudy Matoni, who was a professor at UCLA, who I had TA'd for my very first semester there, and so he needed somebody to work on uh, the Palos Verdes Blue, which is an endangered butterfly with him. The Palos Verdes Blue butterflies, um, they were thought extinct actually for 11 years. I was given permission to experiment with 18 females and just try something new, and had 720 at the end of that season. A friend said, let's go visit the zoo at Moore Park. I go, okay, let's go to the zoo at Moore Park. So we came out here and by the time I made it as far as we are now through the zoo, I thought, this is it. This is one of two academic zoos in the nation. And we brought 350 here and had eight students help me. We ended up with 4,513 sitting in the old greenhouse. It's called the old greenhouse because this was the first greenhouse that we set up. So in the spring what happens is that Lang's Metal Mark is this bottom row down here that you see with our larval containers on living plant. What you see here are the in-house portion of um, the eggs that have just hatched. We just went through hatch in February and what hatches out of these teeny tiny little eggs that you look at through a magnifying glass because they're so small uh, are these little half eyelash long teeny tiny little caterpillars and they eat and grow and eat and grow. They eat food plants so at the back of the project there's a whole bunch of food plant that we have to grow because they're, they're specialists and um, they have to eat and grow for a long time. These will not pupate until August. Up here these are eclosion cups, and inside of those are the pupa from the Palos Verdes Blue. So these up here, these pupa, were caterpillars last spring uh, that ate and grow and ate and grow and ate and grow, and then they go into a pupal casing. And then you give them the right cues, you give them enough heat, enough moisture, enough light, and probably some pheromones from their buddies who are making butterflies around them, and you get a butterfly. And so we are expecting butterflies either this week or next week, and we will start mating them. My favorite part of working with the butterflies is releasing them. And it used to be me releasing them, and now it's watching other people release them. Um, my favorite moment was when my nephew, who came out on his Make-A-Wish uh, trip just two months before he passed away, came out and released butterflies. And that was the final time that my sisters and I and all the cousins were together and we release butterflies. I guess I feel solid enough in the releases that I have a tattoo. <laughs> I kept hearing my mom saying, do you want that on your body for the rest of the life? And I do. Butterflies is my good zone. This is me helping them recover and helping recover the world for my kids and for their kids and seven generations down kids and they helped me recover my life because my life was, was pretty uh, helter-skelter for a little bit there. So it's, uh, I'm passionate not only on a biological level but on a personal, you could say spiritual level.